Hey guys, Jill here for Premiere Basics, a show where we explain the ins and outs of Adobe Premiere Pro. Today is going to be an easy one guys, but it's an important one. I'm going to explain every tool from the toolbar. And as a beginner, you often struggle with finding the right tools to perform certain actions while editing. And once you finally find some of those tools to edit, you don't know what to do with them. Because who knows straight away what a ripple edit tool does? Or a track select forward tool? Well, we didn't either. And that's why we are explaining all of these tools for you. We're starting out easy. The selection tool. Well, this one is quite self-explanatory. With this tool, you can select everything in your timeline. And it's basically the main tool you will be using during an edit. So definitely remember the short key V to select this tool. The second tool is the track select forward tool. And this is your multi select tool. If you hover with the cursor in your timeline, you will see these stacked arrows indicating that you are using the tool. If you now click, you will select every clip right of your cursor. And this means literally everything, video and audio. However, you can also use the select backward tool to select everything left of your cursor. And one extra bonus for this tool, if you hold down the shift key while operating this tool, you can now select everything on one single track and not the entire sequence anymore. Also to indicate this, the stacked arrow cursor becomes a single arrow. The next tool is the ripple edit tool. A super handy tool to make your editing workflow way faster. Now with this tool you can trim or in other words shorten your clip. But while doing that the rest of the clips in your timeline will ripple towards your edit. Meaning that Premiere Pro will automatically close the gap you just created between the two clips. However this also works when making your selected clips longer. Then Premiere Pro will push the clips further in your timeline preventing unwanted cutoff clips. Now underneath the ripple edit tool, we have two more tools hiding out and one of them is the rolling edit tool. Now this one is a little bit similar to the ripple edit tool. However, instead of trimming a clip and moving the rest of the timeline, we now move the edit or cut either forwards or backwards in a sequence, making one clip longer and the other one shorter. And then the last tool in our drop down is the rate stretch tool. With this tool, you can speed up or slow down clips in your timeline. When doing this, the in and out points of your clips will stay the same, only the length of your clip will be adjusted. We are on a roll guys, but do you know who is also on a roll? You and your editing skills. But if you want to make them even better, I would definitely recommend our Skillshare course, Premiere Pro for Beginners. Not only is it one of our most viewed courses, it's also highly rated with over 2,500 positive reviews so far. Now from the start, we teach you the basics of Premiere Pro. So how to organize your workspace and your clips, the basic editing techniques, followed by the toolbar, which you will already understand since you're watching this tutorial. Then you learn some basic video effects that are default in Premiere and often used when editing professional videos. Then we move over to transitions, text and graphics, and how to build your own templates. You will learn how to create custom animations, apply speed ramping to your videos, together with some visual effects, and you will learn how to color correct your videos. And finally, we move on to audio mixing and audio effects, which are highly underestimated by editors. And of course, we teach you how you can properly export your creation in the best possible settings. The best part is that the first 30 days are completely for free, so go to the description down below and hit that first link. Now let's continue with the razor tool. With this fundamental tool, you can simply make edits or cuts in your clips. Easy as that. But if you hold the shift key while using this tool, you will cut clips across all tracks. Again, speeding up your editing workflow. On to the next tool, which is the slip tool. And this tool lets you slip the in and out points of a clip's source without adjusting it in the timeline. So your clip actually stays the same length, but you are moving the in and out points in the source file, giving you a different start and end. Also, while using this tool, you will be given a live preview of your new in and out points in the program monitor. Tool number eight is the slide tool. And this tool is similar to the slip tool, but this time you are sliding a clip on the timeline. The in and out point of the selected clip remain the same, but the surrounding clips are adjusted. They become longer or shorter. And again, we get a live preview in our program monitor showing us what we are doing. Number nine on our list is the pen tool. And this one has multiple functions. The first one is creating custom graphics. With the tool selected, you can just click in your program monitor and create a custom graphics clip. 
but you can also use the pen tool to adjust existing graphics. Now besides creating graphics, you can also use the pen tool for keyframing certain attributes of a clip. When your track is high enough, you are able to see this line right here. If you can't see it, then hold alt while scrolling over the track or just drag the track height up. By default, this is the opacity of your clip. Now with the pen tool, we can easily keyframe the opacity without going to the effect controls panel. However, this line doesn't always stand for the clip's opacity. When we right click on the effects button, we can choose the attribute the line stands for. For example, time remapping. We can now use the pen tool to start speed ramping. Next, we have the rectangle and ellipse tool. And with these, we can create rectangles and ellipse graphics. Seems logical. Number 12, another basic tool called the hand tool. This tool will simply allow you to navigate forward or backward on your timeline. And this of course can also be done with scrolling, but the hand tool can be a little bit more precise. Next up is the zoom tool. And well, this lets you zoom in of course, obviously. It doesn't always have to be rocket science of course. Now you can also hold the alt key if you want to zoom out. And then the last tool is the text tool. And once again, this is quite self-explanatory. With this, you can create text in your program monitor. Just click and type, nothing more, nothing less. And if you want, there is also a vertical type tool to again place text, but this time vertical, of course. And those were all the tools from the toolbar. I hope I expanded your tool knowledge and helped with your editing workflow. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button. And most importantly, stay creative.